uh, the bishop addresses to the assembly about the worthiness of the candidate, the importance of establishing that he lives a life worthy of, as the ritual says, an increase of honor in the church. Ecclesiastici honoris augmento. We must counterpose this, though, with a more predominant word used in the ritual, a similar word, similar sounding, perhaps not in meaning, the word onus. Onus, which is usually translated as responsibility, but means literally burden. In fact, this is the first word used at the very beginning of the rite of ordination. The candidate is presented to the bishop by the archdeacon, who says that the Holy Mother Church presents the deacon for the responsibility of the presbyteral order, the onus presbyteri. Being worthy of an increase of honor in the church means being worthy of an increase of responsibility. That is to say, an increase of the burden one carries for the sake of the mission of the church. In church language, then, ecclesiastici honoris augmento is synonymous with ecclesiastici honoris augmento. The burden, though, is light, as our Lord promises, when the priest carries it in identity with him, when he lives who he is called to be, identified to Christ in his self-offering, in his priesthood, and in his victimhood. Only the priest, because of the unique grace of the sacrament of holy orders, can be this for the church and therefore he can only do what flows from that identity. Not too many years ago, we had another uh, commemoration and a document with reference to St. John Vianney, an instruction from the Congregation for Clergy in the year 2002, on the priest as the pastor and leader of the parish community. The instruction is very explicit in making the same point. It says a parish priest is not a functionary fulfilling a role or providing services to those who request them. Rather, he exercises his ministry in an integral way as a man of God. He shares in the needs and joys of his people. It even says that the presence of an ordained minister is an essential condition for the church's life and not merely for her effective organization. These are monumental words. The very presence of the ordained are essential for the church's life. Without their very presence, there would not be a church. Holy orders, then, is not simply a question of how the church orders her activity. The classic theological formula is that the priest acts in persona Christi, he acts in the person of Christ theologically, but there is also a human dimension to this as well. At the human level, it means that the priest must personify Christ to Christ's people. Our beloved late Holy Father Pope John Paul II, in his uh, post-synodal apostolic exhortation on priestly formation, Pastoris Adabo, which has brought us to this day now. The church as well needs many more who will respond to the Lord's call with a generous heart, who will follow the example of St. John Vianney, uniting themselves to Christ in his priesthood and in his witness, in the way that Christ does it. Again, those duties enumerated in our ritual. In offering, to offer themselves by following the example of the Good Shepherd, laying down their lives for his flock to bless without expecting repayment, to minister without any regard for self-interest, no ulterior motive for what I get out of it, to preside, not for their own glory, to be the center of attention, but to build up bonds of communion in the church and to animate the works of charity among the people of God. 
to baptize, and especially by example, to continuously lead God's people to an ever deeper encounter with His Son, alive and active in the church, and through the church, alive and active in the world. We pray for you today, Deacon Cepeda, on this day in which we give thanks to God. We pray that the words that I will address to you after receiving the vestments of your new office, symbolizing the easy yoke and light burden of Christ that you have taken on, may be fulfilled in your life. That you may believe what you teach, teach what you believe, and put into practice what you teach, for the glory of God and the salvation of souls. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.